my class. In this particular class, I want us to look into this topic, which is resolution of vectors. Resolution of vectors. This is a topic in physics. But before we proceed, there is need for us to look at this basic concept. Vectors, resultant vectors, component of vectors. Then we now look into an example on the board. Now what do we mean by vectors? We have vectors and scalars. That is in physical quantities in physics. So first of all, by scalar quantities, we mean those physical quantities that have only magnitude. By magnitude, we mean numerical values or size without duration. These are scalar quantities. So examples of those physical quantities that have only magnitude without durations, which are scalars, include distance, length, speed, temperature, density, volume, area, and so on. Now, having done this now, we have the other quantities which are called vectors. So vectors or vector quantities are those physical quantities that have both magnitude and duration. That is, they have both numerical values and sizes and durations. So the durations can be determined. That is it. So those ones are called vectors. And in vectors, for you to resolve vectors, you don't add them arithmetically. Rather you do what, or geometrically, rather you do what? You resolve vectors by their what? Duration and components. So that is it. Unlike scalars, where you can write their numerical sizes and add them together uh, arithmetically by algebraic uh, summation. Now, examples of vector quantities include acceleration, then displacement, then we have um, uh, something like um, a force, so velocities. So all these ones are what? Vector quantities because they have both magnitude and what? Duration. Now, have you known what vectors are? What do you mean by resultant vectors? Or resultant vectors or a resultant vector. Rather, resultant vector. By a resultant vector, we mean that single vector which would have the same effects in both magnitude and duration as other original vectors put together. So that single vector that would have the same effect in both magnitude and duration as the original vectors acting or put together is known as what? Resultant vector. As the term implies, result, resultant, the effective vector. Now, now if it has to be force, for example, when we talk about resultant force, we mean the force which acting alone will have the same effect in magnitude and direction as two or more forces acting at the same point in a system that put together in a system. That is it. Okay. Now let's look at component of vectors. What do we mean by component of vectors? By component of vectors, we mean the effective values of vectors in both uh, um, vertical direction and the horizontal direction. That when two vectors act at right angle or perpendicular to each other. So by uh, component of vectors, we mean the effective values of that vector in a given direction, such as vertical direction or horizontal word, direction. So that will give rise to what we have, horizontal component of vector and the vertical component of vector. Now, look at this diagram on the board here. So this one now represents vector. The vector is acting as a point, a right angle at a point. This is the horizontal component on the x-axis. This is the vertical component. So this V represents vectors, that Vy and Vx. Then this Vr here represents what? Resultant vector. That is the resultant of these two vectors. That is it. Okay, now how do we resolve this? We can now see that if you want to get the, the vertical component, for the vertical component of the vector, the vertical component Vy is equal to Vr sine theta. That will give you the vertical component. Then for the horizontal component, for the horizontal component, that's Vx. We have that Vx equals to Vr cos theta. Cos theta. Vr theta is the angle, angle met, the resultant met with the word horizontal, that is the theta. Which means from here to here is right angle, that is perpendicular 90 degree. So when you are giving angle to the vertical, Whatever you are to the vertical, if you subtract it from 90, you still get the angle inclined to the horizontal, which we use to resolve the vectors in both vertical and horizontal directions. So this is it. This is it. 
So with this, you can get the vertical components, and this can get what? Horizontal what? Components. Depending on the vector you are working at, uh, if you are working on force, this view represents your force. If you are doing velocity, you use velocity. If you are working in displacement, you can equally use that. So let's just look at um, how do we now get the resultant vector? We can get a resultant vector from these um, equations, but we can also resolve it as soon as we are giving vertical and horizontal, we are giving given the resultant. I will just angle. You use Pythagoras theory. You use Pythagoras theory and get it. From this, I have just done like this right angle triangle. I can see it. So this is like this parallel to here. This is the vertical. This is the horizontal. So you can now see that the third side, hypotenuse. By part of theory, we can now see that the vertical component, the resultant vector, the resultant vector, the resultant vector will be equal to what? That V square equals to uh, Vx squared plus Vy squared, according to what? A part of rule. So from before going on, I know that the resultant vector will be square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. This will give you the resultant word, the vector. So, with these three equations, I've told us now how we can get the vertical component, the horizontal component of a vector, and the resultant word, the vector. That is it. So, this three formula. So, with this now, we can proceed to an example on the board for clear understanding of this vector. Now, look at this simple question. We are given that a force of 100 Newton is inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal, then we are expected or we are requested to find its effective magnitudes, that are the values, in the vertical and horizontal directions. That by implication, it means what? The vertical component and horizontal component. Remember I told that this is the one here represents represent the vertical component. This is what? Horizontal component. That is the value of that vector in the vertical direction. It's called the vertical component. That the effective value of that vector in horizontal direction is known as what? Well, horizontal component. Okay, looking at this now, the solution, we can now see that if we are to make this diagram, we have this. We have this. So, we have this. So, our angle here is 60 degrees. And we can see that the resultant is given to us as 100 newton. So, we are looking for and the question is talking about force. So we can use F here, Fy, and here, Fx. So following this formula here, the question I, for the uh, vertical component, for vertical component, vertical component, then we have that word, Fy equals to F resultant, sine theta. That is it. So from here, if you know me, our F resultant, this is our F resultant. 100. 100 sine 60 degree. And that will give you 100. Recall that sine 60 degree sine 60 degree is equal to root 3 over 2. So, 100 times root 3 over 2. Or 0 0.860. That is it. So, that will give us this will give us 2 divided 100 gives us 50. That will give us 50 root 3 newton. That is the force. Okay. Then, I, I, for the horizontal component, that is F in the horizontal direction, for, for horizontal horizontal components, we know how that F in F direction is equal to from the formula given here F resultant cos theta, and that will give us our F resultant is what 100 100 cos 60 degree. And we recall, recall that for trigonometry, cos 60 degree is equal to 1 over 2, which is um, complementary to sine 30. Sine 30 is 1 over 2, that is 0 
and consistency is complementary also 1 over 2, 0 0.5. Why is insistence with 3 over 2 or 0 0.860, which is co uh, complementary to what? To, uh, to 30. Okay, so with this, we now have 100 times 1 over 2, which will give us half of 100 what? 50 newton. That's it. So this is the answer we have. So you see, it is very simple. So you can see that it does not necessarily mean a division of the. It doesn't mean dividing by two or sharing it equally. No, it doesn't work that way. In a vectors, we resolve. We resolve the vectors. We don't just divide or add and um, or the bracket. We resolve it. Now there's one thing you should be um, uh, mindful of. When you resolve it com uh, correctly, it will be uh, you observe that that each of the components, the value of each of the components will be less than the resultant that, that are defective. But their algebraic sum will be greater than the resultant. That is it. The value of each one will be less than the, result, the resultant value. But the algebraic arithmetic sum will be greater than the one, a resultant vector, as you can see here. So thank you so much for paying attention to this class. And I believe with this you have understood the basic end of pressure or resolution of vectors. Next class, we continue with um, other important topics or more examples on this. I remind your friend and tutor here, your Newton online class. For more on physics and mathematics, you can reach out to me through my contacts here. Maybe for organizing classes, online classes.